Hi there and welcome back to this European Schoolnet Academy Games in Schools course. This is module 5 where we're going to be talking about designing games um, and in this module we're going to be looking at some advanced games design tools. Uh, we're going to be looking at two games design tools in this module. One is the RPG Game Maker um, and the second is the UDK, the Unreal Development Kit. We're classifying these as advanced games design tools partly because the RPG Game Maker um, takes a huge amount of time uh, and storytelling and scripting in order to create a really, really good game with it. Um, and although the, the game creation features are actually relatively simple, um, and they we're calling the UDK an advanced game design tool because it's industry standard software, and therefore there's a degree of complexity that, that comes with it. Um, so just like other videos in this series, it's not a step-by-step -step guide about how to use these two tools, it's just to introduce you to them um, and to get you thinking about how you might use them in the classroom. So the first piece of software we're going to look, then, look at then is the RPG Game Maker. This is a piece of software for the PC, um, but it has kind of got a Nintendo DSE handheld gaming device um, feel to it, uh, and you'll be able to see that from some of the pictures that are on the screen at the moment. It's all about telling the story and therefore it is highly narrative driven um, and it's based on exploring a map and as you explore the map you come across problems that you need to solve in a narrative driven way uh, and you also come across characters that you need to interact with in a narrative driven way and you also come across characters that you need to interact with and, and fight with um, uh, and, and, and win. Uh, again this is a narrative driven driven way. Just like any map-based games design software, it's designed to take you in a number of different pathways. Um, and although you're confined to the map within the game, uh, there are lots of different pathways that you can take, which gives you a real opportunity there for different types of storytelling. Um, the RPG Game Maker has been incredibly popular um, as a tool in English classrooms um, in order to teach language skills. Um, particularly around engaging reluctant writers. So uh, so as well as it being a really, really good game design tool, uh, have a think about it in the context of literacy as well. The second uh, tool that we're going to introduce you to is something called the UDK, the Unreal Development Kit. You might not have heard of the UDK before. We're always surprised at the amount of people that haven't. However, you're very likely to have heard of some of the games that it's created because pretty much most of the graphics rich games that you get uh, both on the PC, both on tablet computers and also on the major gaming consoles have been built in the UDK. Uh, for example, the Batman series, Infinity Blade, all built within the UD UDK. Um, it is uh, a really interesting piece of software and one of the reasons for that is because it's actually free to use for schools. Um, it's got a, it's got a non-commercial uh, license that goes with it, which means that you can use it in schools, you can use it in your, in your game design classes, as long as you're not going to set, then go on and sell the games that you've created. And if you go on to sell the games you've created, obviously there's, uh, you know, there's, there's, there's costs that are associated with that because it becomes for commercial purposes. But what this does mean is that we can really get industry standard software um, in our schools, and it, and it really is industry standard software. And you'll you'll see already from the pictures on the screen, it, it really is a bit of a step up from previous game design software that we've looked at as part of the games course. And as a result, just through the nature of the software, it's actually pretty complicated to use. However, you're really, really lucky because there are lots of tutorials that are both built into the UDK software. Um, but because, because of the non-commercial licensing that goes with it, there's a huge fan base with using the UDK as well. So there's loads of additional tutorials on YouTube. And indeed, some of them have been de designed for, for schools and, 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 and young adults. Uh, as the video is playing behind me now, uh, you'll see some of the advanced functions of this game design software. You're able to control the lighting. Um, it's based around kind of visual scripting. It's got a really, really sophisticated games design engine and with it a physics engine that comes with that as well. Um, and like some of the other pieces of game design software that we shared with you as part of the course, you've also got the ability to create different levels. I just wanted to reflect on that point for a moment because the ability to create different levels with students is a really, really important one because it means that different students can be working on different levels within the same game at the same time. And this allows uh, the development of collaboration you know, between students and different groups of students. So the UDK 
a fantastic piece of kit uh, that could be used in schools. It is high standard, it is industry spec, it is therefore a bit more complicated to use. And as you can imagine, you also need to make sure that you've got appropriate PCs with good graphics cards and processors to be able to run it, but really, really uh, like a magic piece of software. So that's the end of this module, which has been on designing games. Uh, we've got two Padlet activities for you here. Um, one of the Padlet activities is just asking you to highlight and identify any pieces, any other pieces of game design software that you might have used in the classroom historically or that you're thinking about using that we've not mentioned as part of the course because that will be useful for other participants and I think that's really important. Microsoft Kodu, for example, might come in there. Still popular in a number of classrooms. Um, and the other thing is just a, a quick exercise or a quick question about to try and get you thinking about using computer games out width of the ICT or the computer or the computing classroom and to think a little bit about how might we use computer games for cross-curricular projects or cross-departmental projects. Uh, and we hinted that the computer games could be really useful for this in the introductory video for module five. Um, next week is the last module. Uh, we'll be looking at module six, which is all about what can we, uh, why is it important to teach about games? Uh, and that's where we'll be picking up on some of the challenges around internet safety and responsible use. Until then, enjoy the Padlet activities, enjoy collaborating with each other, and don't forget to use the hashtag GamesCourse to bind the conversations together. See you next week.